It is Thursday, December 14th, 2017. I'm Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. It's Thursday. That means Steve Wolfong, Director of Recruiting for 24-7 Sports. For those of you tuned in for a weather report, here is the weather report for the rest of the winter in southwest Ohio and likely Indianapolis. It's terrible. It's cold. And I question why I started my career and life in such a cold weather climate. We get this weather 90 minutes before you, Daniel. 21, but the sun's out. It could be worse if you lived in northern Indiana and you're getting that lake effect snow or Michigan or snowing in New York. So I, we're in a decent part of the Midwest as far as snow precipitation goes. Who's not cold? Segway. Ohio State recruiting. We all know this. The early signing period starts in six days. It's the 14th. It starts the 20th. The new early signing period has definitely accelerated the commitment schedules for a ton of these dudes. First of all, let's deal with this. Do we expect this new early signing period to act like signing day does, or do we expect the commitments to come over the three days? I expect the very first day, December 20th, to be very similar to what you guys, to what you guys know about the regular signing day. I think – for the Power 5 programs, 90, 90% of the kids are going to sign and sign on the 20th. So, uh, And for some of those programs, 100%. And, and so uh, this is the busy one. And then the one in February now is just going to be the little bit of meat left on the bone. And for some people, it's going to be that nice, juicy, dark piece of meat right there in the corner that you've been saving for the last bite. There's going to be some blue chippers still out there in February, but this is going to be the uh, um, this is going to be the the main signing day moving forward as it stands right now. Very interesting. Always the first time around, there should be some interesting stuff that goes down. I'm sure we'll have some dramatic. Uh, I don't think we're going to have an Ohio State per se, but there'll be some dramatic fax machine powwows. Okay, here's how we're going to do this. Obviously, everyone knows Ohio State's already had an incredible week in adding Tommy Toga and Cam Babb. We will be all over that towards the end of the show. Right now, what I'm going to do is kind of a roll call. I'm going to give Steve the name of a guy, Ohio State, is still recruiting as the early signing day creeps closer, and he's going to give us the latest. The show is going to take about an hour to produce, so good Lord, the way things move, things could change between now and then. But as of about 9 a.m., Eastern Standard Time in the Midwest on Thursday, December 14th. Here is the latest. We'll start with an in-state guy, Tyreek Smith. So a month ago, all Penn State. Two months ago, all Penn State. Yesterday, our Lions 247 insider, Sean Fitz, dropped a note that um, Penn State was moving around James Franklin, or Tyreek Smith was moving around Penn State's in-home also sounds like his official visit to Penn State wasn't electric, I guess, for lack of better words. Um, this is why you hang in there. If the kid's still picking up the phone and going to visit your campus, you bring them in. And Ohio State is trending right now. Uh, on, the, on the Ohio State side of things, checked with a couple sources and even checked with a Southern Cal source. And it, and it sounds good for Ohio State right now. Um, Ohio State going in home on Friday. They're going to get the last in home with Tyreek, uh, who's going to announce his decision at the Under Armour game. Um, it, it, if you ask me today, even though my crystal ball is on Penn State, where Tyreek Smith's going to go, my gut's telling me Ohio State. Now, Penn State's still very much in this, and I think that his family loves Penn State, mom loves Penn State, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But this is one that I thought was almost a foregone conclusion to Penn State. All of a sudden, Ohio State's in a great spot, and you really you, – you, you go back. Tyreek Smith, when he announced his visits for the fall, Penn State was the only one that was getting an unofficial at the time, and they were getting the last official. All of a sudden, he takes that official to Ohio State. Things start to he, – he really loves it, enjoys it, takes an unofficial later, evens things out as far as the fall visits go between Ohio State and Penn State and – 
Ohio State very much in this for Tyreek Smith, and defensive end is really the last remaining need for the Buckeyes in this cycle as they have the number one ranked recruiting class in the country, and they have terrific talent across the board at every position but on the edge. Correct. They used to have that with Brenton Cox, but the Georgia native, I think, is going to end up with the Bulldogs. So that makes sense. Um, The need for a defensive end, I think, hopefully will sway Tyreek a few uh, hundred miles south. And I don't even know if it's a few hundred. It's early. Second dude, Blair Academy, New Jersey, Jason Owe. So I still like Penn State there. Ohio State's uh, been one of the consistent finalists, so we'll see. And Michigan's been trying to make a move. But as it stands today, I like Penn State. But, hell, I was wrong on Tommy Togiai, so Bucknuts listeners, maybe I'll be wrong on Owe too. Do you think it's a domino effect with Smith and Owe? I always get the sense every time I read about Smith, they say Owe is going to go to the other spot. Do you think is it that linear or is it they're kind of operating on their own terms here? Well, at one point it looked like Penn State wasn't going to have spots, so that was also part of the easy to say, well, some will go one way and one, some will go the other. But Penn State's had some defections in their class. So now, I don't, you know, they could all end up at the same school when you lump in Micah Parsons as well. But, again, Tyreek Smith seems to be trending Buckeyes as of this morning. Now, again, Penn State's not going to go away there. They've been recruiting him longer than anybody. So, that one will be interesting. That'll be one of the more interesting ones to follow down the stretch. Before I move on here, I want to actually ask a quick question about Tyreek Smith. You said he's going to commit at the Under Armour game, so that means a week from today we won't know where Tyreek Smith is going. Publicly, we won't know. I'm sure the rumors will really be ramped up by then because there's a chance, okay. I guess, that he would. He if. if I can't remember if Tyreek's an early enrollee, but if he is an early enrollee, he still has to sign in this yeah. window now, and then they have to keep it a secret, which okay. is just the crazy, which just makes recru- just makes you roll your eyes at recruiting, doesn't it? It does. I mean, you had to. It is what it is, right? Wrinkle. But recruiting, yeah. and I'm not rolling my eyes at Tariq. I'm just rolling my eyes at recruiting. Like, it's just, it's just <laughs> funny what it is, you know? It's like one of those deals where if you know that an NFL player is signing a lucrative deal with a new team, you report it. You don't let that franchise uh, have the moment of announcing it themselves. But only in recruiting, when you have the info locked in, do you still wait because there's this thing out, there's this deal out there where apparently that's the kid's moment. That's fine. That's the culture that we live in in recruiting. But in my opinion, the moment is when they tell the head coach they're coming. That's the unique moment. When when you look Urban Meyer in the eye, or you look James Franklin in the eye, or Nick Saban, and say, "I'm." I've made up my mind. I'm committed to play at your university. That is the unique moment that no one ever gets. People can have press conferences. People can, uh, you know. So that's that's my that's always been my little f- funny pet peeve about about this world that I live in at work uh, with recruiting. But it is what it is. But yeah, some of these kids announcing at bowl games, they have to sign their letters of intent before. So then it's on the SID at the school not to accidentally leak their name, and then it's just. It's just an ordeal. It's just the early signing day has really made the the uh, All Star Game announcement funny for the mid year guys. No question. And um, technology has moved faster than the commitment process. So when I started my career low X number of years ago, it was a newspaper. A kid could commit. The newspaper would come out to the next day anyway. So he had his moment solid. Now you know we had an issue with Jalen Holmes obviously committing on the practice field to the Buckeyes. We reported it, and people were like, you took his moment. It's like we're reporting on what we see in front of our eyes. So, well, my man, this is my man Cam Babb, Cam Babb committed on his official in October, you know, and got his video together and, and put it out, and, 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 and uh, that's how he announced his commitment to Ohio State, which is cool. It was awesome. It was an awesome video, and people got a taste of who he is. Uh, but he's been committed since October. And, and uh, Jaron Williams, who committed to Miami, he had been committed since his official visit and waited on his video. And, and yeah, so it's just in the recruiting world, when you know these things as a writer, you can't leak it out. You just have to strongly hint. But the funny thing is it's still not in stone. So even if a kid's silently committed, 
he could still change his mind. So you're strongly hinting that it's going to go down for one school, but then, you know, it gets chipped away at and, and then he flips his commitment. And, and so you're strongly hinting one school, but then two months later you're singing a different tune. As the father of one, I'd also like to mention that nothing could be less stable than relying on a teenage male. So it's one of the things that makes the process a tad interesting. Speaking of interesting, here's a name that has bubbled up hot recently and hasn't been one we've discussed a ton here on the show, and that's Tyler Friday. Yeah, well, he's we've talked about him a couple times in the past. Ohio State's in that top two or three for uh, the New Jersey native, and, and it's another defensive lineman that the Buckeyes are in on. And, and similar, my crystal ball is on Michigan for Friday, but, but if he chose Ohio State, I wouldn't be surprised. Important to note, there are several other crystal balls turning for Friday. I'm not sure if that's... Well, Brian Doan, our New Jersey insider, Brian Doan, our New Jersey, he lives in the state. He predicted Ohio State the other day, so that's a big eye-opening crystal ball forecast in favor of the Buckeyes. And Ohio State, they're all in on these defensive linemen down the stretch, and, and, and Friday's a top target. And when you talk about when you talk to people that know Friday, they just talk about how hard-nosed he is and how hard he plays. It's some, sometimes it's hard to find defensive linemen that play hard, and he plays really hard, and he's a guy that's got a toughness about him that he could he could play offensive guard. He could he could grow into an offensive guard on the next level too. He gives you that kind of flexibility and toughness. I could be wrong about this, but I really also think that this is also the point in time when people start talking seriously behind closed doors about the NFL and players. And if your team is good at producing NFL players around the time guys are going to commit, I think that helps the image of the program. And if you're looking at Ohio State, which has a sophomore defensive lineman, All-American, who they know for a fact next year is going to be a big-time draft pick because older brother's one of the best defensive linemen in the league. It's kind of a nice little template to hop on, hopefully. We know Cam Babb is in the mix. How about another receiver that we talked about, Cam Brown? Well, they're high school teammates, and I think they'll be college teammates, and I think Cameron Brown will be in the fold next week on early signing day. I agree. That should be a layup. No intrigue with Cam, so don't mistake our not going into detail on him for intrigue. We're just uh, moving on to those who are a little more interesting, hence Jackson Carmen Still has a visit coming up. Yeah, USC this weekend was at Clemson last weekend. I think he's going Ohio State, but he's kind of a wild card, so you don't know. Um, Clemson and USC have both recruited him really hard, and Dabo Sweeney was in this week. Clay Helton was in recently. So if you're sending the head coach uh, in that amount of coaches, you, you think you got a shot. So I think Jackson will end up at Ohio State, but uh, confidence isn't as high as like Cam Brown to Ohio State. I'll just say this. Jackson Carmen better be good. That's all I'll say there. Let's talk about the guy that we've talked about arguably more than anyone else in the last 11-plus months as we put a year in here to the cycle. Georgia quarterback, Emory Jones. He's in that, I wish I had answers. I don't, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't, I don't think uh, people uh, – College sources I talk to, they don't know what he's going to do. You know, will he sign with Ohio State? It could happen. Alabama off. Does Alabama, do Alabama and Georgia still really want him? Well, Georgia's got Justin Fields. They're not in the mix. But Alabama does, yeah, absolutely. And You're Auburn, not talking to anybody Auburn. but Alabama? Florida? Auburn, Auburn, Auburn. So, yeah, there's schools in the mix taking their swing at Emory Jones and We'll see, but the last couple commitments that Ohio State got, he's been really excited about those. And Emory's just been pretty quiet. I mean, could he put these rumors to rest and say, I'm signing with Ohio State? Sure, and he hasn't done that. So that certainly adds to the intrigue here. Um, but I think it's possible he signs with Ohio State. I'll just say this, and this is just me personally talking. When it's a quarterback, I don't like it. So I'm not saying I want him to sign somewhere else or commit somewhere else, but if he does commit to Ohio State, I hope he gets, you know, 
it's just I, I don't like it when the quarterback wavers. I realize that's a higher standard or a different standard held for a position, and he's a high school kid. I get it. But the amount of pressure that's going to be on you as the Ohio State quarterback, et cetera, I just think the guy needs to be a little more solid. So, well, on the, flip si- uh, on the flip side, Ohio State starting quarterback next year, Dwayne Haskins uh, was committed to Maryland and kind of left them. He was committed to them, even though everyone knew he was ultimately going to flip to Ohio State. So Ohio State's been on the other side of the fence in this regard before, too. So it's just it's just recruiting, Dan. No, 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 hold on a sec. We're not I we're don't. not supposed to be able to relate to it, or, or because it's just it's just a different deal, man. For we're in our you're in your forties, I'm in my thirties. It's uh, it seems easier for us, but it's not for these young men that are teenagers that have alpha million dollar alpha males in their ear or assistant coaches making five to eight hundred thousand dollars a year in their ear for trying to persuade them to come to their school. Those guys didn't get their jobs by accident. And these guys are teenagers, and their parents have gone through it for the first time. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I don't like, I don't like when my offensive linemen are vocal on social media, and I don't like when quarterbacks waver. But at the same time, I don't know if it's an indicator of how they'll fare on the next level. That was just a lot of gristle for Steve to get out the fact that I'm in my 40s and Steve's in his 30s. Come on, man. Speaking of a guy who could be playing football well into his 30s. Tommy Toe guy, offensive, excuse me, defensive lineman out of Pocatello, Idaho. This actually kind of surprised me. I know that there was some optimism going into it. You obviously had the crystal ball on UW. And then all of a sudden we put out a newsletter that Cam Babb is in the mix. And I'm at my kid's hoops game, and I get a newsletter, like all y'all, that Tommy Toe guy has joined the fold. Take us through what you think happened down the stretch there. Well, Ohio State closed. Um, you, you look at uh, the information. I talked to Tommy Togi after his Washington visit, and he it seemed like he – the pulse I gathered was that it seemed like he fit in a little better out there in their locker room than in the Ohio State locker room, and that he kind of preferred Washington and that his mom wanted him a little closer to home. So, And that was even an Ohio State source that thought, thought that that may be the case. So I gave Washington the edge, but obviously there were people in Ohio State's corner. Now Tommy took visits to, two visits to Ohio State and loved them both. So when he finally sat down to make his decision, it, it, Ohio State won out. And at the same time, you talk about the mom there. I didn't find this out until after Tommy had committed, but his mom had called the, called Ohio State like three times uh, over the course of the week to make sure all his early – all the early entrance stuff was was good to go and that's when an Ohio State source that was skeptical about their chances started thinking hey we got a chance to get this guy and and, and then obviously they did get him so it lets you know also how interesting it is that even behind closed doors the staff themselves doesn't know what these kids are going to do so last yeah, one sometimes it, but they work so hard at it that you know even if they're trailing Ohio State always has a couple come from behind wins on the recruiting trail. And, I, and, it, and from the perception, Ohio State, who knows, Ohio State maybe have always been the favorite for Tommy, and they were the crystal ball favorite. My pick was just on Washington, so I got it wrong based on the intel I had. One you got right, Cam Babb, obviously probably the least surprising of the cycle. Well, just Ohio State – out recruited everybody, out identified and out recruited uh, everybody for him. And he was, it's a great year at receiver in this 2018 class, and that was the guy Ohio State marked number one. So uh, they were on him, they were on him at, uh, as a sophomore, got him to camp that summer, got the chance to offer him there. And then Zach Smith, he has his guys every recruiting cycle, and he just does a great job of connecting with them. And then you get the backing of Urban Meyer, and then you just come to visit. And the players love playing at Ohio State. It just all comes together. Okay. Cam Babb lives in an area where Ohio State's got a chance to be dominant for the guys they want. And, and uh, so Cameron Babb, uh, he, he was a Buckeye lean for a long time and committed in October and then went public with it yesterday or Wednesday. Um, I'm not, I'm he went public with it Tuesday. Tuesday he did. Uh, yep. Yep. 
And Ohio State's obviously had some great success in St. Louis. We don't need to go into detail on that. So what do you expect out of the next six days? The next time we have you on the show will be the day after. So give us an idea of what you expect down the stretch here, maybe some stuff that 24-7 is working on. Well, I think everyone in Ohio State's class is going to sign, except for maybe Emory Jones. I don't know what he's going to do. Um, They could get a signature from Tyreek Smith or Jason Owe, and then those guys announce later. So um, I think when it comes to guys like that, it's going to leak out from the other schools that they didn't sign those guys. So maybe the school that signs them is not going to leak it, but the school that that didn't sign them, you know, it's it's going to be – it should their announcements at those All Star games if they're early enrollees should really come as no surprise um, by the time January rolls around. And then we're covering it 24/7 like it's the normal sign of day. I'll be in Nashville at the 24/7 Sports headquarters working from the home office, and and uh, um, they'll be rocking and rolling on buck nuts. And I assume the media is. I assume that these guys will be. The, the the coaches will be out there talking about who they signed and and everything next week, uh, but I may be wrong on that. No, it'll be an adventure. Any, always the first time is going to be interesting. Hopefully that was a meat-laden, heavy-duty Thursday update. Less than a week to go. Ohio State, barring a monumental change in events, will finish with the number one ranked recruiting class. So things are looking good for your Buckeyes. Have a good one, Bucknutters.